Today, I'm gonna use my Canon M50 to compare the Canon EFM 18 to 150 millimeter lens to the other telephoto lens in the M series, the EFM 55 to 200 millimeter lens. Before I jump into comparing these two lenses, I would like to remind any newcomers that if at any moment you think, hey, this chick ain't that bad, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. As a small YouTuber, every subscriber means so freaking much. You know, got dreams and you can help me achieve them. To start off, I'm gonna go over pricing for these two lenses. The 55 to 200 millimeter lens brand new on canon.com is $349.99, whereas the 18 to 150 millimeter lens, brand new on canon.com is $499.99, which is an additional $150 when compared to the 55 to 200 millimeter lens. Now, when it comes to refurbished, on Canon.com, the 55 to 200 millimeter lens is $279.99, whereas the 18 to 150 millimeter lens is $399.99, which is an additional $120 when compared to the repurposed price of the 55 to 200 millimeter lens. So either way, you're gonna be paying more for the 18 to 150. And in this video, I'm gonna let you know whether or not it is worth that additional price when compared to the 55 to 200 millimeter lens. Also, for those of you who purchased through Amazon Renewed, the 18 to 150 millimeter lens is listed at $438, which is $90 more than the Canon refurbished price. And the 55 to 200 millimeter lens is listed at $277, which is only $2 less than the Canon refurbished price. When it comes to design, at a quick glance, these two lenses look pretty much identical. They are the same height and made with the same material, which is a plastic slash metal combo. They are very sleek and compact as all of the EFM series lenses are. Physically, you don't really see a difference between these two lenses until you remove the lens caps and then you'll see that the 18 to 150 millimeter lens has a whole lot more glass which makes it heavier so the 18 to 150 millimeter lens weighs in at 300 grams and the 55 to 200 millimeter lens weighs in at 260 grams which in the big picture isn't a lot big picture just Okay. Anyways, all that glass is pretty much what you're paying extra for because it allows the 18 to 150 millimeter lens to get some kick-ass range, which I'll give you some samples of right now. To get the sample shots that I'm about to show you, I pushed my measuring tape to its full capacity by measuring out 200 feet from my camera. This is the setup right here. I'm using my GoPro to get this footage and I'll have some more shots taken by my GoPro to give you a perspective of the distances as I show you them. To start off, here's some footage of me standing 10 feet away from the camera. And this is some footage taken with the 18 to 150 millimeter lens set at 18 millimeters. Next up is the 55 to 200 millimeter lens set at 55 millimeters. And in case you need a little bit more perspective, here's the footage side by side. Still at the same distance of 10 feet, here is the 18 to 150 millimeter lens set at 150 millimeters. And here is the 55 to 200 millimeter lens set at 200 millimeters, both of which way too zoomed in. Next up, here's me standing 40 feet away from my camera. Here is the 18 to 150 millimeter lens set at 18 millimeters. Here is the 55 to 200 millimeter lens set at 55 millimeters. And here they are side by side. Still set at 40 feet away, here is the 150 millimeters set at 150 millimeters and the 200 set at 200. I accidentally overshot my head a little bit for this, sorry guys. Regardless of that, here they are side by side. Next up is me standing 100 feet away from my camera. Here is the 18 to 150 millimeters set at 18 millimeters. 
and the 55 to 200 millimeters set at 55 millimeters. And here they are side by side. Still at 100 feet away, here is the 150 millimeters set at 150 millimeters and the 200 millimeter set at 200 millimeters. And here they are side by side. Next up is 200 feet. In case you can't tell, this is my camera and this is me. First, we have the 18 to 150 millimeter lens set at 18 millimeters. Next, we have the 55 to 200 millimeter lens set at 55 millimeters. And here they are side by side. Still at 200 feet, here is the 18 to 150 millimeter lens set at 150 millimeters. Here is the 55 to 200 millimeter lens set at 200 millimeters. And here they are side by side. When it comes to focal length, I think the best feature for the 18 to 150 millimeter lens is the range that it has. Being able to go from a super wide shot to a very zoomed in shot with the same lens has been extremely freeing in that I do not have to change my lenses constantly. However, even though it zooms in to 150 millimeters, I still find myself wanting that extra push to 200 millimeters and having to switch my lens to the 55 to 200 millimeter to get that extra push. Just because there's been times where I'm trying to make a photo and the composition just doesn't feel right with the 150 millimeter focal length. So I switch over to 200 millimeters, get a little bit more zoom in and it looks so much better. Here's an example of what I mean by that. For these two photos, I was standing in the same exact spot and both lenses are maxed out. When it comes to aperture, the range on these lenses are roughly the same. The 18 to 150 millimeters has an aperture range of 3.5 to 6.3, whereas the 55 to 200 has an aperture range of 4.5 to 6.3. The aperture is not the strongest suit of this lens. However, if you're zoomed in on something and it's a subject that's taking up relatively most of the shot and you have your aperture all the way down to 6.3, then you're still gonna get that blurry background. And the same goes for the 18 to 150 millimeter lens. By the way, both of these lenses get some pretty good portrait shots. And while I'm showing you some comparison photos, here are some landscape photos that I've gotten with the 18 to 150 millimeter lens. And here are some landscape photos that I've gotten with the 55 to 200 millimeter lens. When it comes to sharpness, I've been getting questions about these two lenses and honestly, neither of them provide the most sharp, crisp shots, but for their price point, I don't think they do a bad job. And I think that how sharp and crisp your photo comes out depends on so many different factors, including your tripod, the lighting, and your camera settings. And there's been times where I get a shot that looks very crisp and sharp with the 55 to 200 especially. But for the most part, when it comes to sharpness, the differences are very subtle with these two lenses. And I think that for their price point, they don't do a bad job. I would say if you want to get sharper, crisper shots, you probably need to get a higher budget camera and a higher budget lens than a Canon M50 with one of these. And that's just me being honest, but you gotta work with what you got and make the most out of it because they still provide very beautiful shots that are very in focus. I will say though, when it comes to wildlife, if you're interested in getting some sharp, crisp photos of wildlife, these lenses aren't really gonna do much for you unless the wildlife is very close up. I find that I always wish I could zoom in more, especially when trying to get photos of birds. Just doesn't work out for either of these lenses. So unless you have a subject who is staying still and is 
not too far away, then these lenses both will be very challenging to get wildlife photos with. That's all I have to say about these two lenses. I hope this video helps someone out there make a purchasing decision. If it did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And until next time, bye.